Today we're going to be making a working day-night system using only events, variables and pictures. This tutorial is very heavily inspired by the Unpro Pro's day-night system tutorial which I'll link in the description. The reason I'm making it is because in the next tutorial where we go over mining experience we're going to be heavily relying on this day-night system. So if you like I'll leave his link in the description you can go over and check out his channel and if you love all things RPG Maker then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you can get notified whenever I post up a new video that's got tips, tricks, tutorials and just general discussion about RPG Maker. So to start we're going to come up into the settings and into the common events tab and we're just going to create a common event called time counting. What this is going to do is run in the background and count the time as it passes by. So we're going to need to create a few variables for this. First is going to be time counter. So go into control variables then create time counter and then right here you just want to add it to be a constant of 1. That's all we're going to do for now. So add that in and what this does is because it's going to run as a parallel process every time a frame passes the value of 1 is going to be added to this variable. Now we also want to go over to switches and create a switch called time and that's only going to run this parallel process when time is on. So then we're going to go and create a conditional branch so we want to create a variable time counter and if time counter is greater than 600 that means 600 frames which translates from 60 frames a second to 10 seconds so every 10 seconds firstly we want to reset time counter to zero by just going control variable and set time counter to zero after that we want to add another control variable so we go control variables then we want to set minutes then under the variable minutes we want to set that to add 10 so now every time this reaches 600 it's going to add plus 10 to minutes so what that's going to do is after 10 seconds you'll be at 10 minutes after 20 seconds you'll be at 20 minutes so on so forth next we want to create a new conditional branch if minutes is equal to 60 then we're going to like we did with the time counter set minutes to zero and then we're going to with this next control variable set hours which is another variable set hours to add 1. So every 10 seconds we add 10 to the value of minutes and every 60 minutes we add 1 to the value of hours. Lastly what we want to do is create another conditional branch where the variable hours is equal to 24 and when that happens we just want to go into control variables and set hours to 0. Don't worry about this common event here that's for a different video later on. And now just like that we have a working system that's going to count the minutes, the hours and at 24 hours it's going to reset to zero and that will mark one day. We want to create another common event called display time. Name it up here. This is also going to be a parallel event and this time it's going to be on when display time is switched on. And what this is doing is it's going to show a clock. So I'll demonstrate what that clock looks like now. As you can see in the top left hand corner we've got a clock and after 10 seconds that one's going to increase. There we go so now we're at 10.10. 10. After another 10 seconds that one's going to become 10.20. So what we're doing with this next display time event is making sure this clock is displayed and it represents an accurate time. So here's how we do it quite simply. We want to import a bunch of images under pictures so I'll show you what I've got here. I've got 00, zero which represents 12 o'clock midnight. This one here represents 1 a.m. and this goes all the way through. This represents 7 a.m. This goes all the way all up to 23 which represents 11 p.m. Then we're going to have some minutes. So I've got the minutes 00, zero there. We've got the minutes 10 there and minutes 20 and so on so forth. So you're going to need a different picture for every one of the hours and every one of the minutes such as we're doing this in multiples of 10 so you don't need to do every single minute but yeah so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and then once it hits 60 it'll go down to 0, 0. And lastly I've just got some semicolons that I'm putting between the two hours and minutes. So in the display time what we've got is at the very start we've got show semicolons at this designation then we've got a bunch of if statements so if hours is equal to zero then show picture h00 which is hours 00 and that's got 96 as its designation 
and these pictures will change every time the hours change. So then if hours are equal to 1, then show this picture, which is 0, 1, so on so forth. Then we scroll down and we've got the same for minutes. So it says if minutes is equal to 0, then show 0, 0. If minutes is equal to 10, then show the minutes equaling to 10 and so on so forth. So you do this for every different image you want to show on the clock. And now the rest of these common events is really up to your own discretion. You can have one for day and one for night time. I've got a whole different range. So I've got dawn, day, dusk, night and midnight. Dawn, it's got a little red tint to it for the morning. Day is just like a completely clear screen. Dusk is if it's dusk. Night is if it's night. And midnight is like a much darker tint to the screen. What I've got here is if hours is equal to or greater than 6 and if hours is less than 7 and if inside is off. Inside is another control switch which we're going to use whether the player is inside or outside. So if inside is off then it's going to tint the screen to the colour I've designated as what the dawn should look like. Then the next one if hours are equal to or above 7 and below 18 then it's just going to tint the screen to a normal daytime and this just goes on with the different tints for the different times as you can see dusk is between 17 and 18 night is between 19 and 23 and then midnight is between 0 and 6 now so that all works in the top left corner of uh, where my character first enters the world it's got control switches time on control switches display time on and it's a parallel process. So when the character first enters the world, these switches are going to activate, which is going to start the ticker. So that's going to start counting seconds, it's going to start counting minutes and hours. And then this one here is going to start displaying the represented variables. Now let's say you've got the screen tinted and you want to go inside a building and you don't want a midnight tint happening inside the building. And on this door event, what we're going to do is when the player transfers through, we're going to turn inside on and we're going to tint the screen back to normal. What inside on means is if the time changes, let's say it becomes from uh, 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. while you're inside, it's not going to tint the screen because inside is on. The second we turn inside off, then it's going to start tinting the screen. So if we go inside here and look at this event, what I've got it doing is fading out transferring the player, waiting 60 seconds to give the screen enough time to tint, and then we're turning inside off, and then we're fading the screen back in. And that's all there really is. I've got this girl down here saying time change, and she's just going to increase the hours by one, and we'll show you how it works in real time. So there you can see in the top left hand corner we've got a working clock that's changing, it's currently 10.10, it's about to become 10.20. Also if you guys are enjoying my content then please scroll down and hit the like button, it means that my videos can get out to more people. Now what we're going to do is go over to this girl who's going to change the time, so I'll click on her and she's going to say time change. Then it's going to increase the hours by one, and the more I talk to her, the more the hours are going up. Now when we go on to the next one, she's going to start tinting the screen. So there we go, now that it's evening time, the screen's been tilted. Let's go forward a bit more so it tilts to night time. There we go, it's night time. And that's how you make a working day-night system which changes days. What we'll be going over in the next video, which I'll link just right now, you should see a card to the left hand side, is how to create a mining system using only events and variables. So stick around for that video and I'll see you there.